to discover new places, new ideas, and the bigger world around us. And I'm grateful for the role you play. Supporting your local station ensures that together we can continue to share these stories. Thank you. Bringing the best in public broadcasting to South Central Kentucky, your local public broadcasting station, WKYU, PBS, Bowling Green. The views and opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and contributors, and are not those of WKYU-TV, its management, or WKU. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inaugural episode of Topper Talk. As you can see, the lights are on, unlike the Superdome last night, and we bathe ourselves in deer antler spray for the evening to bring you some great Hill Topper <laughs> sports talk. I am Sean Williams, along with... Shane, Jonathan, or Woody, either way. Yeah. Colin Wee. Adam Haley. All right. And this is Stopper Talk. So That's right. Uh, how did this all come together? We're on TV now. What's up you with know, this? We, we've been doing a lot the last year, and, uh, you know, we started our Western Sports blog about a year ago. It's February 20th. And, uh, Your you know, anniversary's for, coming up, man. That's right. Anniversary's <laughs> coming up. For, for is this late. your longest relationship, Adam? It is. I think this is my <laughs> longest relationship. <laughs> but, no, we, we started about a year ago, and... Uh, it got big somehow, and I guess somehow. people appreciated the content that we were bringing, and now we got a TV show, so here we go. Yeah. Moving this up is in the, the first one. Moving up in the world. It's only, it's only up from here. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, like I said, you can catch our stuff on uh, InsideHilltopperSports.com. That's where uh, you can find all our content, writing and everything like that, mm -hmm. cover recruiting and everything like that. But the first big topic, in, of course, is last night, the Super Bowl. I mean, you had uh, the Ravens winning, but let's talk about the WKU ties. I mean, let's talk about that. Yeah, I mean, there were several there. And uh, ESPN, they, they did a little bit on uh, Jack Harbaugh. So and they they name dropped Western a couple times and then of course you had Bobby Rainey who was uh, star running back here uh, yeah. graduated last year he went to uh, the Ravens after he didn't get drafted but he made the team he was on the practice squad for a little while then he got caught up for their Monday night football game but he's been on injury reserve so he was on the sidelines so he still got his ring last night yeah I don't think they uh, mentioned uh, any Western ties during the broadcast no, though, they, but they was kind of pregame I heard one maybe a week and a half before when yeah. they did the the uh, article or the story on Jack Harbaugh. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we had Western ties. Of course, you know, John Harbaugh wins and, you know, Jim, Jim loses. Hey, they're doing a lot of complaining there at the end, but uh, <laughs> like a high school basketball coach in the fourth region, right, guys? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think the best part about uh, last night was when the lights were out and you just saw John. He was just going off to that random guy <laughs> on the sideline. Well, I think that uh, he, was, he was mad because I think the officials were telling him he needs to, there was like a communication issue. They need to, he needed to bring his coordinators right. down the field. He didn't want that to happen, right. obviously. But yeah, so, uh, a lot of Western ties in the, in the game last night and I know a lot of Western fans have been tweeting about that yeah. the last couple of days, so it's good publicity for Definitely. the university. I mean, any, any publicity, especially on the, the biggest stage of all in the NFL, and that's good publicity for Western right yeah. there. So I would like to mention real quick that uh, this is an interactive show, so uh, if you tweet at us, at, at WKU, WKU Rivals, uh, we'll get your questions, and then we'll do our best to answer them in the 30 minutes that we have for the show. Yeah. Or you can tweet uh, our Twitter account that's devoted just for the show, which is just right. at Topper Talk. At Topper Talk. We like to be interactive people, so send us some questions, and we'll uh, we'll speak objectively. That's right. So we our fans, we want to hear whatever y'all have to say. Yeah. So uh, I mean, what's what's coming up on Wednesday? Y'all heard anything about this? I mean, it's like some big stuff going on. Probably right? more excited about it's Wednesday. Like Christmas. Than wow. Else I'm too excited about it. I mean, you know. <laughs> Yes. But anyway, it's National Signing Day Wednesday, of course, and, uh, you know, big, supposed to be a big day for Western. Of course, Bobby Petrino's in the house. He's been doing his thing since he's been on campus. Oh, so on Twitter now, Signing 56 recruits. Yeah, yeah, he's on Twitter now, by the way, so please go follow him on Twitter. Uh, you know, he'll tweet us out some good stuff. He's on Twitter sure. for 12 hours. Do you think he'll tweet more followers than we do. Do you think he'll tweet out some area codes during the signing I'm, day? I'm going to miss the area codes. <laughs> I hope he gives us something. <laughs> he's got to keep us entertained. He's, he's, he's got to at least tweet he's he's got to bring it in, right? He's got to bring it in. Oh, yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah, he probably wanted to tweet. 
<laughs> well, anyway, you know, as far as uh, all the recruiting stuff, which you can go check out on InsideHilltopperSports.com. But right now, I mean, it's a pretty big class. I mean, we just got word that we got another kid that flipped to us. I mean, that makes 32 total commits. We have seven JUCO commits, eight early uh, enrollees. And, I mean, you go through the list here. Um, I've got it right in front of me. I mean, the biggest thing that sticks out is the offensive linemen. we got seven offensive linemen. Uh, three of those are three-star athletes. Uh, the biggest one, Joe Fennell, which was originally committed to us during Taggart, uh, when Taggart was here. And then you flip to U, uh, UCF, or USF uh, when Taggart went there, and he flipped back to mm -hmm. us, apparently for academic reasons, whatever. But, I mean, he's the 21st-ranked offensive lineman in the country, so, I mean, that's a big get for us. I mean, we got some big hog mollies up front, so obviously it's pretty clear that they want to protect the quarterback. Oh, yeah, for sure. And then, you know, that kind of fits in with Petrino-style offense anyways, mm -hmm. and you can protect that quarterback, and you're going to see that passing game open up. Um, you know, yeah, Gus was definitely going to pass more than we have in the past. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely going to be more than. I mean, I, obviously, I mean, which we got to stop pile of running backs already, but there's no running backs currently committed right now. So yeah. I mean, but you know, it, there's a, a it's Wednesday. I know it's just around the corner, but a lot of things can change. You know, kids flip on signing day; they commit elsewhere. So I mean, a lot of a lot of things can happen in that regard. So I mean, but but I mean, you look at this. I mean, the big thing, big thing for them, seven offensive linemen, so they want to protect the quarterback. A lot of defensive backs too. There's five total. Uh, you know, they obviously uh, they got some big big defensive backs, so they're they're looking to be aggressive on defense, and that's something that Nick Holt, the defensive right. coordinator, st stretched uh, stress whenever he was on uh, whenever he was introduced here uh, as a defensive coordinator. So I mean, yeah, you'd like you'd like to see some improvement from the defense. It started off the season pretty good last year, and then kind of had lackluster performance mm -hmm. there. Yeah, they kind of the stretch off when they started losing all those games. So. Definitely a lot of talent. But oh yeah, there's a, there's a lot of talent. Uh, you know. Some guys need to learn how to wrap up a little better. Than yeah, a little bit. Well, especially, <laughs> towards the, especially towards the end of the season. But uh, it's just a year to keep going for Western. And, and I know people on Twitter have been talking about 12-0, and 0, which, uh, I mean, it's good to think about. But I think this is potentially a team that's going to could win 10 games next yeah, year. Yeah, that's, that's well, Especially with uh, the Sun Belt, you know, with – uh, MTSU and FAU leaving early. Yeah, now we and us only having seven conference games now and picking up an extra mm -hmm. FCS yeah, game. We're going to pick up a, uh, another school. It's going to be, of course, a really small football school, uh, which but, will be a win. But all of our out of conference games next year are all winnable games. Yep. I mean, yeah, Tennessee is a, has been down. UK is UK. And we proved uh, last year we could beat them. The UK game is going to be good next year just I think because it will be. you see the kids that they have coming in. And uh, they got, they got a new coaching, coaching system. Yeah, some Stoops and got and there. They they really brought in some recruits. But you know, will those kids be ready to play on September first or whatever exactly. day that I game think, is? They're supposed to be SEC. Yeah, they're supposed to be SEC. And then of course you got a new one uh, the second week of the season, and which could be you looked at Tennessee's defense last year, which was uh, terrible under Sincere, and that's a winnable game, I think. Uh, Petrino knows. How to coach against SEC schools? I think he's got to be just looking his chops for these two games. I mean, two yeah. teams that turned him down as their coach. You know, he's, he's yeah. got to be excited about coming in and maybe getting those two wins. Yeah, yeah so it, for sure. You could, if you started off two and zero against SEC schools, then yeah, then you probably come back ranked. If not, probably then so. we, is it Army yeah. or Navy the next game? Um, I don't know. I had to. I think it's Army, 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 Army and Navy. Navy's in the yeah. middle of the season. Yeah, but so if you could get but three both of those games, both of those Army and Navy games are going to be tough on our yeah, defense, yeah. though, yeah. because of the it's option to action. Action. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be tough. But if you, you know, if you could start off three and zero potentially, I mean, I'm not saying that. Yeah, that's what we're definitely going to do. I think that's what you're saying, man. But I mean, <laughs> I would, I would <laughs> love that. But look, the Sun Belt's going to be weaker next year too, with the teams we're losing and the ones we're replacing. I mean, Texas State and Georgia State, they're not. We're ready, to, ready to compete yet, and then we also have South Al on the schedule as one of our other games. Yeah, we didn't get the to South Al should be, a, should be a win. I mean, that's three. That's three more winnable games right there. Yeah, you're, I mean, Middle had a good team last year, but I think what you, the core of the Sun Belt football is still going to be here. You know, you got still got both Arkansas teams that are going to be good next year. Um, Monroe is going to be pretty good next year. So we do. The Sun Belt does lose Middle in North Texas, uh, of course. FAU, uh, I mean, they didn't. They're not much, but I mean, they, they play. They play us. us. <laughs> they beat us. I mean, FIU was a tough game too. So I mean, you could say that about a lot of teams that we were supposed to win, beat last year, but yep. you know, they you know came into our house or surprisingly beat us. So yeah. I mean, 
You know, it's one of those things, like I said, the defense kind of tailed off last year. It's still a top-20 defense yeah, in the they country. Mean, they still I mean, so, I mean, going back to what you said, you know, Kentucky's supposed to be ACC, but I think as far as talent-wise that we already have on the roster, I mean, I think we're pretty set to I mean, we're, we're, we're even again. matched, especially – they have a lot of talent coming in, but that is new talent, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we already got two guys on our defense that yeah. are projected to be, yeah. you know, near top NFL draft picks, you know, in this first few rounds. So, I mean, it's yeah. we have the talent. With Petrino's teams at Louisville, too, you know, I was, I said before, I was a freshman up there the year they went to the Orange Bowl, and I, he, he had some good defenses up there. I mean, he put a lot of talent in the NFL. A lot yeah. of people aren't talking about that. But, uh, I mean, he's still, like William Gay, for one, he's starting for the Steelers. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think he's coming into some good talent. He's going to get some good players, too. And I think it's, you know, everybody's talking about the passing game and how that's going to be the best thing. But, you know, I think he's going to have a pretty solid defense, too. Well, much much like a lot of coaches, uh, you know, he had a pretty big obstacle taking over. Uh, I mean, officially he didn't take over on January 1st. You know, so, I mean, you got to, you know, he's pretty much hit the ground running on recruiting. And mm -hmm. yeah, the responded really well to him, yeah. as far as Especially the receivers that I've talked to. I mean, they're really excited about. Oh yeah, I'm excited too. Yeah. 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 So, so, I think Austin Aiken's going to have a breakout year. Yeah, right? oh, yeah. Oh, he's going to be good I mean, this year. I mean, you look at the offense, and I've said this before on our previous podcast, but we're not really losing much. I mean, Jack Doyle mm -hmm. and uh, you know Kwan, and that's that's about it. No, don't forget back. You know, Q Smith on defense. Yeah. I'm just checking. <laughs> no, no, I'm just making sure about offense next year. <laughs> so, I mean, he's, he's getting thing. the but you got, you got running backs in the nation. You also have Mitchell. Mitchell. I mean, you got, you got Mitchell Henry. I mean, he's probably just yeah, going to Yeah, Mitchell Henry was just as, he's I mean, could end up being just as good as Jack Doyle was. Mm -hmm. And then you got, you're going to have three quarterbacks who are going to battle it out. And who knows where that's going to go because they're all legit quarterbacks. Yeah, and speaking of the quarterback situation, I mean, we, you got you got three legit quarterbacks. It's going to be a hot uh, hot quarterback battle during yep. the spring. It'll you be interesting to see how spring ball goes. Yeah, everybody's uh, everybody's talked about Morrow and uh, Demarcus Smith, but everybody keeps forgetting about Brandon Dowdy. Yep, keeps forgetting about Dowdy, who came in, you know, as a freshman when Jake's. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Got hurt on that first series, but uh, yeah. man, he looked good. Yeah, <laughs> got hurt. yeah you, gotta, you gotta think he replaced Jake's the starting quarterback at one point in time. I mean, just unfortunately got hurt on that first series and tore his ACL. So I mean, you got three legitimate quarterbacks that'll be vying for the uh, starting job, and it'd be interesting to see that quarterback battle. I'm sure it'll probably it won't be settled in the spring. It'll progress no. in the fall. Um, and yeah, it'll. So and probably maybe even into the season you yeah, can see I mean, two different quarterbacks playing. Exactly. I Which mean, I mean, if it if you do it right, it works out okay. But you'd rather have a guy yeah, going yeah, into the season. Solid guy. So all right. So yeah, yeah. I'm not a fan of of the going into the season with, yeah. with multiple quarterbacks. quarterbacks and changing. So uh, yeah, I mean you know National Signing Day is Wednesday. Uh, we'll be uh, I mean I'll be off work all day. We'll be covering it. So uh, you can check that out on InsideHilltopperSports.com. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we're, we're probably going to do a live blog for that, too. Live blog. Uh, so Sean can keep everybody updated and uh, check in every once in a while. I'll be going to the press conference and pretend like I'm important and all that good stuff. So, <laughs> 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 All right, fellas, moving on. Uh, so what about this basketball team? Jamal Crook is back. What do you think about that? It was much better watching him leading the offense Saturday. Yeah, much sure than it was. Offense, right? Yeah, it, it looked a lot better. I know he didn't have any points. Yeah, uh, his, his shot was off a little bit, and maybe he was trying. He was might have been trying to rush things into his shot, but I mean, he was all over it, and it's going to come. He's shaking the rust off. Well, first time in nine games we've had more assists than we had turnovers. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's a big thing for him to come back his first game after the injury and have six assists. I mean, that it's was huge. Yeah, you could just tell the offense was really flowing in that game, and especially for his first game back. And now Ray's going to be able to use him at the point and then move Brandon, yep. Kevin. They're going to get their shots again like they were before he got injured. And you're going to see the shooting percentage go up, I believe. And maybe they might try to work the ball to, through the post a little more. I think we kind of saw that so a little bit. We heard that from George in the post game is there's more confidence in the team when Jamal's out there. And I think, I mean, you just look at how George and Alex Rostov and, and team played against Troy. I mean, they, I know in the first half they had 26 of the 32 points. Yeah. I and mean, they had been fairly non-existent for a few weeks since Jamal had been out. And it's yeah. nice to see them stepping it up. And that's mm -hmm. definitely going to be huge for us going forward and getting ready for the postseason. Yeah, and going back to saying that Jamal didn't score any points, you know, in the post game, he said, you know, he's getting a little frustrated <laughs> out there, you know, not hitting shots, you know, that he'd normally hit, of course, his first game back. But, I mean, uh, you know, he said he got a little frustrated out there, which is understandable. I mean, any player that wants to go out there and he's averaging 14 and a half yeah. points a game wants to score. But, uh, I mean, still six assists, and uh, I think he had uh, four rebounds, uh, two steals. So, I mean, a really productive game. And you can tell the offense was full on 
a lot better. Yeah, than most than importantly, he got the win. Yeah. yeah, and he played 27 minutes too, which is surprising because I didn't think. I, I, didn't, yeah, I didn't honestly think, think he was going to be playing play until much. this week against North Texas. Yeah. yeah, and so he came out and had a pretty good game. I mean, that's another key factor too. You got a week. You got a week before the next game, so yeah. I mean, that's more time for him to heal and, and get back in the flow of things. So, well, I think I think you're going to see. This was kind of the point of the season last year where things got turned around. And I'm not saying by any means that this season is as bad as last season's was. But now you got Jamal coming back. And uh, they got, a fa I mean, a decent schedule to be able to get some wins here at the end. And I know you still got Middle Tennessee and South Carolina. games are going to be in Dead Arena, which yeah. definitely plays to our favor. That's right. So, I mean, you, got, you might lose a couple games, but I think there's a good chance of getting a flow going on into Hot Springs. But the most important thing, I think, is locking down a top seed where you don't have to play. I would have to lose get one of the top five seeds. Yeah, you have to get a top team. five yeah. Yeah, out of the uh, 11 teams. We're sitting in sixth right now. So, so if we can go we get some wins here, five and, and three or six and two in these next eight games, we'll be probably yeah. still in pretty good shape. I, I'd hate. I mean, it worked out last year, and I mean, you've seen a couple teams do it. Arkansas really rocked it a couple years ago, and played yeah. four games in four days. But I don't think anybody really wants to it's do that. It's doing far between. That's right. <laughs> so. so I mean, uh, we got uh, some questions on Twitter here. Telegram uh, tweets at us, says, "Congrats on the show. Thank you very much." And he also says, "What do you think it'll take for WKU to get out of the slump?" It's going to have to go, the offense is going to have to go to the post, I think. Um, and I know that we don't have the biggest post guys. We have some of the tallest ones, but. <laughs> not, not some of the most aggressive ones, right? Very dominant as far as strength goes. Mm -hmm. But I think you're going to have to see the ball go to the post a little more. And that's going to, that's going to open up the outside shot. And we got some good shooters. Mm -hmm. I mean, not necessarily by statistics <laughs> so far this year, but you look at T.J. Price, Brandon Harris, Caspar, uh, I mean, Jamal's not really known for three-point shooting. There's no Ting in there. Yeah, Ting, I mean, Ting, <laughs> do you think, shoot. Do you think Ting just needs to hang out on the wing and shoot threes all game? Uh, all I'm a new bow. <laughs> I mean, I'd, I mean, I'd, I'd love to see Ting, <laughs> I mean, ting <laughs> get dominant. He's not Reggie so, Miller or anything. I don't, I don't see him doing that. It's, he, that's not his type yeah, of play. He doesn't though. I mean, yeah. Uh, I know I'm not going to go to the post. coming against North Texas. Yeah, he loves playing against North Texas. He does. He does. He can always count on 20 from Ting against North Texas. So, but... Well, I mean, they're going to – the offense has to get going again. And it's been pretty non-existent. It looked a lot better last well, week. In the Troy game, we saw George without the knee brace for the first time in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, he you know, he had a lot of spring in the legs. He was up there getting some rebounds. Oh, yeah, George. We hadn't, we hadn't seen that rebound a really good last week. And, and, um, if, he's, if he's back to the George that was the most outstanding player of the Sun Belt tournament last year, that's definitely going to be huge for us. And hopefully he's back to that point. Yeah, and even, even Harper said in the post game that, you know, T.J. Price is looking a little more explosive yeah. out there. Yeah, than like T.J. So, I mean, he's getting better, too. And TJ, like, everybody's TJ. finally getting getting above being that, like, at 80%, yeah, 85%. Yeah, percent health, getting, health is getting, getting a lot better. T.J., he can get to the rim. I mean, a lot, almost any. He's he's good at getting into the paint, and uh, Jamal's shot's going to come back. I mean, it, it, it. I know it's going to, and he was just drilling mid-range jumpers before he got hurt, and that's something that we don't have. I mean, yeah. We can set up and shoot, and shoot a decent percentage from three-point, but we don't have somebody that can penetrate. Penetrate, and, yeah. Know, shoot mean, footer. That's another thing. It looks it looked a lot smoother because it seems like before, you know, when Crook during Cook's injury, I mean, we just kind of selling for three-point shots way oh, yeah. too much. Yeah, that, that's all the offense was. Yeah. It was just I mean, it's nobody it was can penetrate point. inside and get it to the open man or, you know, and our, shoot our a three point percentage actually went up from what it was early in the season when Crook was healthy. Mm -hmm. but it was just a matter of we were just jacking up more shots. Yeah. Uh, but our, our percentage overall from the field, from two-point field goals and in, in, in the paint, drastically went down yeah. after Cook went out. Like, we just couldn't buy a basket inside for whatever reason. That's why we had to resort to jacking up so many long-range shots. Mm. Yeah, but so, I mean, like we said, if we can get, I think we have maybe like seven or eight games left, and if you can get five wins or so, then that's, I believe that'll be enough to move us up into fifth place, going into Hot Springs so, you know, I think I think we could make a run in the tournament. The the team that poses the greatest threat besides Middle Tennessee, I think, but hopefully we won't be on the same side as Middle Tennessee, but it's looking like we probably will. But Arkansas Little Rock is I think is the team that's gonna give us the I most. I think they problems. just match up. They match up so well they're I mean really bad. the the big guys are well, they got a, a lot better they got a big guy. Yeah, they have the best so, I mean, big guy in the conference and yeah. so I mean it's it's gonna be interesting to see how the season turns out though, especially People should be excited that Jamal's back, and I'd really like to see people come out and support and pack little. I know the Middle Tennessee game is going to be sold out, but if we can get 
5,000 to 6,000 people in Doodle again mm -hmm. and get that place rocking. I think it's going to help out a lot. I think it I mean, it all comes down to wins. And they, they go to North Texas and win. And yeah, and that, that's a win that I believe we'll get. North Texas, the uh, yeah. two players went yeah, down North for Texas them. Yeah, that Jacob Holman, who's one of the, my favorite players to watch over the last few years, but he's had three concussions in the last year. He's going to go ahead and sit out the rest of the season. Yeah, and he was averaging record. like six points a game this year or something mm -hmm. like that. And then another guy that's going to have to have knee surgery is going to go ahead and be done for the year. So uh, they're, they're kind of a train wreck this year. I don't know. No, they yeah. were predicted to win the, t the conference in the preseason, and they're 8-16 and 16 right now, I think. And yeah, they, they're not on a very good streak, and they lost to uh, Louisiana Lafayette of all teams. So they're not about 31 points. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then you know Tony Mitchell, he's he's gone after this year. I would say I don't think he's going to want to try to come back and do anything at North Texas. Which he probably <laughs> he might have made a mistake in coming back this year. I mean he's yeah, averaging he like college ball, man. fourteen a game, <laughs> eight rebounds a game. But I mean I think that he probably thought that North Texas would be back in the championship. Maybe he wants to come back next year and lead them to the Sunbelt Conference Championship. Well, good luck. Okay. <laughs> we got a long way to go next year. So I mean we got. It's going to be interesting to see how everything shakes out. I've been telling everybody since Jamal went down, if we can ever ever get to where we're healthy, then I, I think we'll make a good run. And yeah. everything just, you know, Dabi just said on Twitter, he said ball reversal and spacing look better with Crook. And uh, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, things just look so much smoother out there. And, uh, and definitely as Jamal gets more and more shaking the rust off and his shot starts falling, there's going to be that much more of a threat. And I don't think Tony's going to want to see us in Hot Springs. I think we're going to be getting things rolling pretty good these next couple of weeks. And if we can get that win against MTSU in the last home game, get all that confidence built up like we did last year, you know, it's going to be an exciting time, I think. Yeah. We're going to have to play really good to get that win. <laughs> MTSU's yeah. tough. Yeah. MTSU is one of the best MTSU teams I've seen in a long time. One of five they're, teams. I don't they're the best team ever. Probably. 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 is. Yeah, they were good last year, but I think they're setting it maybe five losses so far. Yeah, they were good last year. I think they got shown, though, you know, in my opinion. They if they, if they keep winning, though, like if, if they don't lose any games for the rest of the year, then I don't think it's going to matter what they do in hot springs. No, well, they're getting that if, if they, can, if they went there. out, I think if they, I mean, they need a couple more. They're setting 20 and 4 right now. They need a couple more wins, and, I mean, they should be ranked. Yep. Uh, they they are. Man over Ole Miss. I mean, yeah, they, they beat Ole Miss. They beat Vandy, which it's Vandy, but you no, know, Vandy played Kentucky well, and they Vandy's all right. It's a solid win. It's still a good win. Yeah, it's a good win. win for Ole Miss. Is a, is a good team. Ole Miss, so. Ole, Miss, Ole Miss is a good win. So it's not going to matter if they win out or you know lose one more of their last games. If they make it. At least in to the. Ch I'd love to be the one who's supposed to. probably have to make it to the championship <laughs> game to still get into the tournament. I'd That'd be such a fun I think, way. I think as long as they don't lose in the first round like they have in so many years past, then you know I think they'll still make the tourney as long as they keep winning games how they are now. But you know if they if they go in the, to Hot Springs and lay an egg again like they have. The Kermit Davis way. Yeah. Then. Uh, of course, they went. They're team down again. They are. They went down to FIU, which somebody just pointed out on Twitter, uh, which I it was during our game last week, and then we were trying to watch the ending of it, but we mm -hmm. couldn't get it pulled up. Uh, but <laughs> they won on a last second lob at the rim. But then they went to FIU and had a pretty good win. Yeah. So middle middle's a good team, and. They're, they're going to prove it, I think, in the Sunday this year. I'd love for that to be a way just to send them out of the conference, though, is for us to take their bowl bid from them and then to beat them in the last game and then slip up in hot springs. Nothing will make me happier than to see them just completely <laughs> get dissed again. <laughs> It'll probably happen because it's MTSU. It's yeah. Kermit Davis. Kermit can't win in the we could, pr we could probably talk, like, you know, an, um, another hour about you know, North Tennessee. North Tennessee this hour. <laughs> we'll do that. We'll <laughs> say that for another show. Hey, that's hate week. That's hate week's episode. Yeah. All right, so what about basketball recruits? Somebody wants to know about that. Uh, 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 shed us some light, people. We've got three new guys that will be on the team next year as of now. Uh, we've got uh, Alison Ka, who's uh, in prep school in Virginia right now. He's... Mm -hmm. I've seen him listed anywhere from 6'8 to 6'10. I'm going to lean towards the more 6'10 range. He looks pretty tall. He's all of 6'10, 215. Yeah. We're on the slender side, so hopefully <laughs> a lot of people are comparing him to Jeremy Evans, former Hilltopper. So if you know if that's what he is, then that's what we need is a nice shot blocking defensive presence with, with Tang leaving. And I, think, I think I was 6'5, 215 in high school, so that's <laughs> perspective on how skewed this kid is. Um, you know, then we've got Chris Harrison Docks, who just transferred from, from Butler. He's got a little, little swagger to him, maybe the best word to describe him. Yeah. Uh, mm. Ray recruited him a lot as an assistant before Ken McDonald was, was let go, and I think he was kind of bummed not to get that pickup. And, yeah. But now we've got him transferred here. He's been on campus for a few weeks, and yeah, I think he's a point guard of the future. He's I've watched all his highlight tapes, and he looks pretty solid, I think. Yeah. He's a guy that's going to get his own shot. He's going to set things up well for others. And he can hit the I'm tray. excited about him. He can. he can hit the three, which is always good. And we've got uh, 
Trincy Jackson, who just transferred from uh, Texas Tech. He's, uh, he's faced a few problems, caused a little bit of controversy in, in the Internet world. So what do you think about that? I think it's a good pickup. You know, if I you mean, need, he's uh, been academically ineligible. He's been, I think times. we need some more athleticism, and that's definitely something that he brings to the team, though. For sure. Like, I mean, ath athletic out of the guard position is something we haven't had so uh, I, wow. I saw somebody talking about the, the dunk video that we tweeted out of him when he first got here, and I can't remember the last time we've had a 6'2 player that could throw down some of the dunks <laughs> that he was doing. Yeah, I mean, he, he was getting up. But, you know, he's, he's, he's been suspended from his team twice this year. Yeah. Uh, like you guys were saying, he just kind of reminds me of a Juan Patillo type. Uh, just bouncing around. He's going to come here. To what? I, I don't want to well, say anything I mean, about I don't know about him. So yeah, I, I mean, you don't, you know, you don't know what just, the suspicion is. This is just my from. speculation as a fan. But if he, if he has the same attitude as Juan had, and you saw how that just kind of blew up towards the end of that time mm -hmm. here, I don't know how much he's going to contribute. He's athletic, which we don't have, and you're right about that. But I mean, you're talking about a kid that's had some problems in the past. But, you know, anybody can turn it around. He might just slip late a couple of times. I mean, you never know. <laughs> it's probably a little more than that. But, but, I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Well, he's a college kid. Yeah. He, well, look, he's, right. got, he's got a year to prove himself. I mean, obviously, yeah, he's he, not going to be eligible until next December. Yeah, so he'll be so. able to practice and everything. But So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. But, I mean, oh, you're, taking, you're taking a chance on him, I think, and yeah. it might pay off. And if it, it does it pay off, then you great. Yeah. yeah. When you really, really need more big guys, in my opinion. Adam, yeah. you keep tapping on that table. You like that table? This is a nice table. You like these chairs? Everything here is pretty, pretty awesome, ain't you? The, the, table, the table is one of the, is a really nice table. The chairs are nice. I wish I had this in my workout room, actually. Uh, well, maybe you can get it from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I can get it from the Jasper group. Because they provided these tables right, and chairs. Yeah, we'd, we'd like so we would like to thank them, yeah. the Jasper Group. Thanks, guys. Job. Yeah, yeah, thanks, guys. Good. Appreciate it. Making I know everybody at home yeah. likes this set, too. Our Pretty little uh, yeah. Mike and Mike version <laughs> here at WKU. Yeah, we'd like to uh, go ahead and thank the, uh, the top of Satellite Sports Network and uh, WKYU, yeah. the PBS, local PBS station here for uh, letting us do this. And yeah, it's, it's, it's actually, awesome. I'd the, actually like that. It looks good. Yeah, people, and, uh, tweet us out what you think about the set. Yeah, I think, I think it looks great. So, there's that. Cool. <laughs> there's right. that. There's that. So, um, so you guys uh, got any shout-outs or anything? Shout-out for everybody that was uh, interacting with us on, uh, on Twitter. You know, keep, keep doing it. We're going to make this a weekly show. It's going to air every Monday night at 6.30. Uh, so make sure and tune in. Uh, you know, we welcome all fan interaction. Uh, so... Join in, join in the conversation from now on. Yeah, this is the rough draft version, uh, the first version, so, uh, you know, you have to bear with us. We'll get used to it as time goes on. We're not used to having all these lights and cameras and everything. We're used to doing it in my living room. You're going to step up. <laughs> so so Sean's, Sean's workout room. room. <laughs> Sean's living room slash where he lifts his weights at. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm going to shout out the Lady Tops of the hardwood. Yeah, you know, talk, about uh, them. talk about them for a second. They're sitting 16-5 overall, 9-3 and three in the conference, and coming from where things were last year, which was just absolutely brutal. I don't think anybody saw this coming. You know, we're sitting in the number three seed in the, in the conference right now, which is just a huge turnaround. You know, Coach, Coach Carr Curd has been awesome. She's so much fun to watch at the games. Uh, if y'all haven't gotten out to the Lady Tops games this year, I definitely encourage y'all to do that. They are uh, they get after it on defense. They're, they're super undersized, and, and they just they fight people, man. They get after it. And tenacious. They're, they're very tenacious. That's a, right. bit, that's a big turnaround for uh, a team that's got a depleted roster, too. Sure. I mean, that's pretty incredible yeah, right. what they've been doing. Yeah. Like their best recruit is not even playing this year, is that right? Yeah, Kendall Noble tore her ACL. You know, she's been out pretty much the whole season. Yeah. So she played like 12 minutes of one game. All right. Well, where, where, where do you think that they could potentially end up at in the Sunbelt tournament? Uh, I think we're still holding on to that three seed pretty well. Yeah, I think uh, we've still got eight games left as well. I think we'll probably finish up in that, you know, 16 and 4, 15 and 5 range. And uh, MTSU is the same as the men. Their women are still pretty tough. Yeah. All right. All right, Adam, you got any quick shout-outs? Got less than 30. Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> Thank you, Shout-out to all the fans that are watching tonight, and uh, that's it. Yep. For the fans, uh, I mean, y'all made this happen. So uh, Every Monday night at 6.30. Yeah, 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 we appreciate everybody that back in. Blew, blew the site up and helped us out. So all right. Thanks. Thank you so we thank you guys day. a lot. We'll see you all next week. See you next week, Monday at 6.30. Be here. Go Tops. Go Tops. Go Tops.